Today we observe Easter. Many celebrate with baskets full of goodies and Easter egg hunts. But Easter is so much more than chocolate eggs and bunnies. It's about the fulfillment of a prophecy that set us all free. It's a celebration of a day that changed the world forever. Some call it Resurrection Sunday. The story of Easter begins in Genesis in the Garden of Eden. God gave Adam and Eve one rule, but they broke that rule. They disobeyed God and sin entered into the world. God promised to one day send a savior to save all people from their sins. Ever since then, God told them to sacrifice a perfect spotless lamb on an altar and give it to God as a sacrifice for their sins. Many hundreds of years later, a virgin named Mary conceived a child given by God himself. It was Jesus, the promised savior. Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. Jesus did not stay a small baby. He grew up and became a man. The whole time, he never sinned, not even once. He even did miracles like healing the sick and raising the dead. But despite all that, people tried to find fault in him. Jesus had many followers, but they were also those who sought to kill Jesus. Not everyone liked what he had to say. One day, Jesus and his disciples were traveling to Jerusalem. Before they entered the city, Jesus told two of his disciples to go ahead of them and find a donkey and her colt, a young donkey. Untie them and bring them to him. If anyone asked why they were taking them, Jesus told them to say, the Lord has need of them. The two disciples did as Jesus had said, and they brought the donkey and its mother to Jesus. The disciples placed robes on the back of the donkey, and Jesus rode the donkey into Jerusalem. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, he was greeted by a crowd of people waving palm branches and worshiping Jesus, saying, Hosanna! Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who has come in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! But not everyone truly meant what they were saying. Some weren't actually worshiping Jesus in their hearts, but were just following the crowd. One of those people was Judas, whom everyone thought was a follower of Jesus. There were also those in the town who heard all the commotion and asked, What's going on? Who is he? Some people answered, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. As the news of this spread to the ears of the religious leaders, they became very angry. They started to make a plan to kill Jesus. That same week was a special holiday called Passover. Jesus' disciples came to him and asked, where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal? Jesus gave detailed instructions on what to do and where to find a place to observe Passover. The disciples did as Jesus said, and they prepared for Passover. When it was evening, Jesus took his place at the table with his 12 disciples. Then Jesus got up from the meal and began to wash his disciples' feet. But when he came to Peter, Peter asked, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, one day you will understand these things. Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus simply and sweetly said, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Peter then insisted Jesus wash not only his feet, but his hands and his head as well. Peter did not understand that Jesus was not merely talking about clean feet, but the salvation that comes only through Jesus. But Jesus told them, not all of you are clean. He knew that one of his disciples was about to betray him. That same night, Jesus took his disciples for a walk to the garden to pray. Jesus knew the time for him to die for our sins was coming soon. Even though he knew it would be hard and even painful, Jesus loved us and he wanted to obey his father's plan. Jesus was sad, so God sent an angel to strengthen him. Jesus continued to pray. Jesus soon found his disciples all asleep while they were supposed to be praying. Get up, Jesus told them. My betrayer is approaching. Suddenly, they saw a crowd of people coming toward them, and they seemed to be led by one man. It was Judas. Judas walked up to Jesus and gave him a kiss. Judas. Jesus said, you have betrayed the son of man with a kiss. Judas had led those who wanted to kill Jesus right to him. He had told them, the one whom I kiss is Jesus. The crowd began to take Jesus away. And Jesus said, all the days I sat teaching in the temple, yet you did not arrest me. But this happens now so that the scriptures of the prophets would be fulfilled. As the crowd led Jesus away, his disciples fled. Those who had arrested Jesus brought him to Caiaphas, the high priest. The Jewish court was trying to find fault in Jesus. And although many false witnesses came forward with their lies, the court could find no fault in him. Finally, two men came forward saying, I heard this man say he would destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. 
The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer? Is this true? But Jesus, like a sheep before his shearer is silent, did not open his mouth. The high priest said, Tell us, are you Christ, the Son of the living God? Jesus said that he was. And the high priest yelled, Blasphemy! You heard him! He claims to be equal with God! The crowd declared Jesus guilty unto death. It was early morning when they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Roman governor Pilate's residence. Pilate came outside to them and asked, What accusations do you bring against this man? Why can't you pass judgment on him yourselves according to your own law? The crowd replied, We cannot legally put anyone to death. The angry crowd wasn't satisfied with any other punishment for Jesus. They wanted Jesus to die. So Pilate called for Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, My kingdom is not of this world. I am a heavenly king. Since Jesus did not claim to be an earthly king, Pilate did not see how this man could be a threat or understand what it was that he was guilty of. He went back out to Jesus' accusers and announced, I find no fault in this man. Now, during the Passover, it was tradition to release one prisoner to the people, whomever the people wanted. Pilate remembered this and gave the crowd an option in an attempt to release Jesus. He said, Whom shall I release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, King of the Jews? Barabbas was an evil man, a murderer. Surely the crowd wouldn't release him, but the crowd shouted, Free Barabbas! Pilate was trying his best to give the people what they wanted and still release Jesus. Even Pilate's own wife had said to release him. Pilate ordered that Jesus be taken and severely whipped. Roman soldiers made a crown of thorns to mock Jesus and pushed the thorns into his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and teased him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat in his face and hit him. Pilate brought Jesus out for the people to see. Look, I bring you Jesus, so you know I find no fault in him. But the chief priests and their officers shouted, crucify him, crucify him, you crucify him. I see no reason to do it. The Jewish leaders explained that Jesus claims to be the son of God and according to their law, he should be put to death. When Pilate heard this, he was afraid. He kept trying to release Jesus, but the religious leaders said, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. Pilate saw that there was nothing he could do. He took some water and washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. You take care of it yourselves. The people replied, Let his blood be on us and our children. Pilate released Barabbas for them and handed over Jesus to be crucified. The governor's soldier took Jesus, stripped him, put a scarlet robe around him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and beat him over the head, driving the thorns deeper into his skull. They took the scarlet robe from him and led him away to be crucified. They seized Simon of Cyrene, placed the cross on his back, and had him carry it for Jesus. Two criminals were also led away to be executed with Jesus. They brought them to Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, with three nails. They nailed Jesus to a cross, with criminals on either side of him. Pilate had a notice written and posted on the cross above Jesus, which read, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. As Jesus hung on the cross, People continued to mock him. One man said, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down that we might believe in him. One of the criminals even said to Jesus, Are you the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other criminal replied to him, We are getting what we deserve for what we did, but this man, he is innocent. Then he turned to Jesus and said, Jesus, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Today, you will be with me in paradise. When it was noon, darkness covered the land until three o'clock. At that time, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus had taken the sins of the whole world, including yours and mine, and placed them on himself. God must turn his back on sin, and so turned his back on Jesus. Then with his last breath, Jesus called out with a loud voice, "It." is finished. At that moment, the temple curtain was torn from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split apart. A Roman guard who stood in front of Jesus and saw how he had died said, truly, this man was the son of God. 
When evening had come, Joseph of Arimathea, a member of the Jewish council, went boldly before Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Once Pilate knew that Jesus was dead, he gave Jesus' body to Joseph. Nicodemus went with Joseph and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes. They took Jesus' body and wrapped it with sweet-smelling spices and strips of linen. Now at the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. In the garden was a new tomb where no one had yet been buried. They had to hurry and bury Jesus' body before the Sabbath. So they placed Jesus' body in that tomb because it was nearby. Mary Magdalene, along with Mary, the mother of James, saw where Jesus' body was placed. They returned home and prepared spices and perfumes to bring to Jesus' body. But the next day was Saturday, the Sabbath. And as they were commanded, they rested on that day. Meanwhile, the chief priests and Pharisees remembered that Jesus said he would rise again after three days. So they went to Pilate and asked that he order the tomb to be sealed so that Jesus' followers cannot steal his body. Pilate ordered to seal the tomb and secure it with guards. It seemed like there was no hope for Jesus' followers. Jesus was dead, and now his tomb was sealed and guarded. But then came Sunday. On Sunday morning, the earth began to shake. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven and rolled away that stone that covered Jesus' tomb. The guards were shaken and were so afraid that they couldn't even move. The Sabbath was now over and Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and their friend Salome were coming to the tomb to bring their spices and ointment that they would use to anoint Jesus' body. But when they arrived at the tomb, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robes sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. He said to them, Do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he is not here. He is risen. Look at the place where they laid him. Now go and tell his disciples, Jesus is alive. Not even death could stop him. He lived for us because he loved us. He died for us to save us and take our sins away. He rose to prove his power over sin and the grave. Jesus was our perfect lamb because he never sinned. He was the only one who could pay for our sins. He was our sin sacrifice. No longer do we need to sacrifice a lamb for our sins because Jesus paid it all. He paid our sin debt. This is the free gift of salvation that he offers to everyone. This Easter, or Resurrection Sunday, if you haven't already accepted it, Jesus offers you a gift better than you can find in any basket. He offers you forgiveness of your sin. He offers you freedom. He offers you a home with him in heaven one day. This is the free gift because Jesus paid for it for you. Have you accepted it? You accept it today?